What's going on YouTube? So Audi's Q5 has always been the breadwinner of their crossover lineup. While at least here in the US, the Q3 has been mostly ignored. However, that is likely changing now with the introduction of this thoroughly modernized, high-tech and sporty looking new Q3. Of course, we do want to take a moment to specially thank our friends at Audi of Lexington for giving us access to this Q3 and the beautiful Kronos Gray metallic paint color. And if you're in the market for any new Audi, make sure you stop by their dealership or visit them via their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with that all said, let's see if the Q3 has what it takes to stand out from the Q5's shadow. So starting things off here with the exterior design, you can tell right off the bat that the old jelly bean look has been thoroughly vanquished. In its place, we have a big dose of Q8 to spice things up, including up front with the newest single frame grille. It does keep this same design across the entire Q3 lineup, but unlike most Audis, the S-Line appearance group is not standard on the Premium or the Premium Plus. Now we have that $1,300 option checked off, which extensively changes the lower fascia to look both lower and sportier. As far as the headlights, you also have a couple different choices. So the base premium model has partially LED lights, but you'll have to get at least the premium plus to get these fully LED lights with the new signature daytime running lights and turn signal. Moving to the side and back, the Q8 inspired design continues with a much more sloped hatch than what you find in the Q5. This gives it a more aggressive stance that is set off by the narrow, angular taillights. Now unlike the headlights, they are fully LED on all the trims, including the signature dynamic turn signal. And then finally down at the bottom, S and non-S lines come with vastly different designs. But regardless, you'll never find any exposed exhaust outlet. So overall, the new Q3 is a really nice looking crossover, with a design that makes you forget about its size and the bad proportions of the outgoing model. Now turning our attention to the wheels, they also play an important role in the overall design. Obviously, these specific 20 inch wheels are giant, so as you'd expect, they are optional on both the Premium Plus and Prestige with the S line. As far as the normal wheels, they are either 18 inch 5 spoke alloys or 19 inch dark finished alloys on the S line models. Heading on up to the mirrors, they are always power adjusting and heated with premium plus adding blind spot monitoring and prestige adding auto dimming and power folding. And last but certainly not least, we have the active safety feature. The Q3 actually comes standard with more systems than the Q5 since it has both automatic emergency braking and automatic high beam headlights. Lane departure alert also gets added on the Premium Plus, and the only system left is adaptive cruise which is optional on Prestige. But anyways, that's it for the outside, so now let's see the new high tech cabin. So on the new Q3, you will find Audi's advanced entry system, standard on the Premium Plus and Prestige, or you can option it on via the convenience package onto the Premium trim. Um, now you might be noticing we actually have Audi's older style key. I don't really know why, but this is the older style switchblade key, and it is here on the new Q3. Nevertheless, it does operate the same as all Audi advanced entry systems, so all you have to do is just grab the handle, and it will open right up. Now, of course, the big change is the inside of this Q3. It is a night and day difference from the outgoing model. As you can see, it jumps straight to the newest design language in the Audi lineup. 
Now even though this is one of the more affordable Audi models, they don't skimp on giving you plenty of interior color and material options. So starting out with, one of the nice features of this vehicle is it comes standard with real leather across the entire lineup. That's pretty rare for this class of vehicle. Um, and your color options on the standard version are black, okapi brown, or pearl beige. Now, when you go up to the Prestige model or optional on the Premium Plus, uh, you have a sport interior package. That's going to give you these special sport seats with the special stitching. Um, and you have two options for that, black or rotor gray. Now, as far as interior trim pieces, um, this is where things get kind of interesting. Uh, you have the choice between gloss black or aluminum on the base model. Going up to the Premium Plus unlocks natural brown wood. Or when you go for this model with the sport interior package, like I already mentioned, you have the additional option to add these really unique looking orange accents. Um, this is definitely something that makes this interior stand out, whether you like it or not. Now turning over here to your door trim, it is very nicely finished. Of course, uh, like I was saying, we have the orange Alcantara interior accents. Um, this feels very nice and it does look very unique, like I already said. And as far as the other materials, they are all nice and soft touch. As far as your windows, they are one touch automatic for all four. You will notice you kind of have this upside down aluminum door handle, which is pretty cool looking. Okay, turning over here to the seat, it is eight way power adjusting with four way lumbar support across all the models. Um, and if you go for the premium plus or up, you will also have the manual thigh extension. Then of course, like I already said, you do have real leather across all the models, but we have these special sport seats with the sport interior package. So we even have the little S branding, the color contrast stitching, and the really large and aggressive bolsters. Um, certainly looks very nice, and they're very comfortable when you set them. So like I already mentioned, with this redesign, the Q3 has jumped straight to the latest Audi design language, uh, shared pretty similarly with like the Audi Q8 and some mo the most recent Audis. Um, material quality is also taking a big leap forward with this new model. So here on the upper dash, we do have a soft touch plastic across the entire thing. On this flat portion here, uh, we do have the orange Alcantara with the special package. But regardless, you will have some type of trim piece right here. Uh, we have the darkened aluminum. Like I said, there's a ton of different options that you can have. All the lower plastics are also nicely padded, which is very nice. Um, and the fit and finish, of course, is very, very good, as you expect from Audi. Standard on all models, press the button to start. Now when you do, you're going to notice one of two different displays fire up. Uh, what we have here is the optional 10.1 inch display on the Premium Plus. It is standard on the Prestige, but we have the Premium Plus. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at a 8.8 .8 inch display instead. Now in a similar way to the main display, the gauges are also available in two different configurations. A standard version that comes on the Premium and Premium Plus, or this 12.3 inch virtual cockpit setup that comes optional on the Premium Plus or standard on the Prestige. Um, the standard version is a still a digital display actually. It's a 10.25 one, but like I already mentioned, this is the full-fledged version the 12.3 inch virtual cockpit like you see in all the other more expensive Audi models. So you can still do things like blow up your map really big and cycle through various other types of information. Now there is not a head up display in case you're wondering. Now coming back to the steering wheel, of course we do have electric power assisted steering and a standard leather wrap steering wheel. Um, as far as the buttons, these go with virtual cockpit, and these go with your standard phone audio and voice commands. We do also have rain sensing wipers here on this Premium Plus model. And the steering wheel itself is manually adjusting. Um, I don't think heating is available, but I'd have to check on that. 
All right, now as far as interior storage, Audi has definitely made good use of the limited amount of space inside this vehicle. Really, it feels just about equivalent to the Q5. So you still have a pretty decently sized center console here. Um, it goes down like about a six inches or so, and it does have a pad down in the bottom. Now by default, this sets like this, which is kind of low. However, like in most Audis, it is adjustable, so you can raise it up to a more a comfortable position. Up in front of that, we've got two cup holders, a little slot to hold our key fob. And then we have another really nicely sized bin right here. This is actually a wireless phone charger on the Premium Plus and the Prestige. And you will notice that you have both a USB Type-C and a USB Type-A port. Both are the charging capacity. And there is a 12 volt outlet right here. Now, you uh, actually do have a physical shifter here on the Q3, surprisingly, since uh, most other Audis have gone to an electronic shifter at this point. Um, and as such, it does operate in a traditional way, so you just pull back for drive, and you can bump to the right to shift manually right here. Or, if you go for the Sport Interior package like this model has, we will also get paddles on the steering wheel. Now heading into reverse, all models do come standard with a backup camera. Um, when you go up to the Premium Plus level, you will also get standard parking sensors, or, although they are also available optionally on the Premium. Um, and then when you go for the Prestige, that's where you're going to get the 360 degree camera system, um, as well as auto parking abilities. And then back behind the shifter, you do have an electronic parking brake. Now, like most other Audi models, we also have this little layer of buttons here with a few different controls. Uh, the main one here is our drive select. Um, this shows you your five different drive modes. So you have off-road, comfort, automatic, dynamic, or an individual mode. And we can click onto that, and you can see what you can tailor to your custom liking. And then the other noteworthy button here is our button right there to turn on and off the auto start stop system. All right, and now that brings us here to the audio system. Now I wasn't able to actually find the number of speakers in the bass sound system. Um, however, a lot of the models are gonna come with this uh, 580 watt 15 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. It is available as an option on this Premium Plus or standard on the Prestige. So let's go ahead and take a sample of that. Overall sound quality of this system is excellent. Alright, now the next row of buttons up. This is going to be for our standard dual zone automatic climate controls. Now Audi's actually kept things very simple here. Um, all you've got is three main knobs to control your driver and passenger temperature as well as your fan speed. And then you can change the zones right here. And everything is represented physically here. You don't have to go searching for anything inside of the screen, which I definitely like. The other noteworthy thing is that Audi says that it's one of the only vehicles in the class to offer standard three-stage heated seats across all the models regardless. Um, however, you're not going to get seat ventilation on any model. Alright, so now that brings us to our brand new MMI touch response system. Um, this of course is a big jump up from the previous version which had a really, really old version of MMI. Um, so let's go ahead and take a quick look. So like I just said, this is Audi's new MMI touch response system. It is brand new, it's just now rolling out to all the models, and it started with, you know, things like the Q8, the Audi A6, and A8, vehicles like that. Now this version does just have one screen, unlike those that have break it into two different sections, but it functions pretty much the same. 
Now you've got some shortcut buttons along the side and all your applications are lined up here. Now going into the highlights here, I will jump into the navigation system. As you can see right now, we just have the standard map enabled. However, we can also enable the Google Earth map if we go into the settings. Now, one of the things to point out is this navigation only comes on the models with the bigger display. Like I said, that's optional on this Premium Plus or standard on the Prestige. And one of the other noteworthy things that separates the standard model with the smaller 8.8 inch display from this model with the larger display is in the phone apps. Now, every single model will come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So that's not the difference. The difference is when you get this interface here, uh, you have wireless Apple CarPlay. And that's definitely a standout feature since very few vehicles at any price point regardless have the wireless Apple CarPlay. So that's definitely a cool touch for this model. But other than that, everything is pretty much the same. Um, so I'll go ahead and stop talking about it here, but we do have a dedicated tech help video available for those of you who want to learn more about the system. A link to that video will be provided in the description. Now moving on up, we do have a standard auto dimming mirror with the new frameless design. Um, and we also have the Homelink Universal door openers, um, but if you're wondering where they're at, they're not actually up here like some of the recent Audis. They're going to be located down here. What you got to do is just swipe down and click that button right there. And then moving on up here, we have one of the most uh, premium and impressive features of the Q3. And that's that we have a standard panoramic moonroof across all the models. Um, Audi says this is the only car in the entire class to give you this as standard equipment. And as you can see, it does really make for a nice open airy feel. This front panel slides back a really far away and you do also have a wind buffer. And overall, I'm just really, really impressed by the cabin of the Q3. It's on, you honestly have to remind yourself that you're in one of the most affordable Audis. Uh, this will be the, the cheapest crossover that you can buy in the US lineup. And uh, it just doesn't feel like it in here. It really captures all the main elements that the newest Audis like the Q8 and models like that have. Um, and it also feels a lot bigger than you'd expect from a subcompact crossover. So all in all, definitely impressed by the level of luxury, features, and space inside the cabin. But anyways, that does it for the front portion. So now I'll go ahead and hand it off to my brother Mason who will check out all the back areas. Alrighty, so heading around to the second row of the all new 2019 Audi Q3, you are gonna find a very good amount of space for its class. You'll find 36 inches of both leg and headroom which does put it on par with some of the largest offerings in the class, like the Volvo XC40. Now turning over here to the door trim, you will find a very interesting design, especially on this particular Q3. So you do have a leather accenting going all the way through here, as well as some orange uh, microfiber inserts on this particular model. And even the upper portion is soft touch plastic. Now down below that, you do have a fully automatic window and even some door storage. Now turning over to the seats themselves, uh, they do have a very nice design actually, I'm a big fan of it, and they are very comfortable and have these white color contrast stitching inserts. Now off to the side you do have a storage compartment actually very similar to the Volvo XC40 uh, and you can fit quite a bit of stuff in here. And I do also want to point out one of the Q3's unique features and that's that these rear seats do slide and recline, uh, which is very uncommon for this class. Now here in the center area, Audi does give you plenty of nice features even though this is their base model. So you do have standard rear air vents across all of the models. And down below that you will also find two smart charging USB ports as well as a 12 volt power outlet. 
do also have a fold down seat armrest and it does have some cup holders in the end. And up top you do have some LED lighting as well as a nice premium headliner. And you will of course notice that this model does have the panoramic moonroof. It's actually standard across all of the Q3s which is a really nice touch and it helps uh, make this otherwise might be a little bit cramped type of vehicle actually very spacious back here. Off to the left we have an assist grip and coat hook. And of course, like I was mentioning, this is on par with some of the largest offerings in this class. Uh, so behind your seating position, I have about six to seven inches of rear leg room, and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. As you can see, I can even move them up and down. Uh, so I'm actually very, very comfortable in this Q3's rear seat, which is not something that I could say about the old model. Now the rear seats of the Q3 do also fold 40, 20, 40 split. So all you have to do to fold them is grab this little strap and it does fold right down. Now coming around to the trunk of the Q3, you will notice that it is standard power, which is a nice feature for the class. And it's also hands-free if you opt for the premium plus or prestige trims. So in order to open it, just wave your foot under the bumper. And it does open right up. Now once inside the Q3's trunk, you are going to find a, a good amount of space for its class. You'll find 24 cubic feet behind the second row seats, and that expands to 48 cubic feet if you fold them. Now like I mentioned, that is on par for most in the class. Uh, however, you will notice that this is quite a bit smaller than the Q5 if that's something that you're comparing that to. Now, as far as how Audi finishes it back here, they have not really skimped on any of the features or anything. Uh, so you do have a really nice carpeted floorboard as well as a 12 volt power outlet on this side. And there's actually something pretty unique about the floor of the Q3 and that's that it can uh, adjust different um, heights here. So underneath of the floor, we do have a spare tire. And if you want some hidden storage, you can actually raise this up on this little level here. So I'll go ahead and demo it right now. It's a little hard to do with one hand, but as you can see, I have just now raised the floor so you do have some hidden storage underneath, or as, as I showed you before, you can actually just lower it about six inches uh, to give you some extra storage spots. Now coming over to the passenger seat, it is eight-way power adjusting with four-way lumbar support. It does also have that unique Alcantara design. And in front of the passenger, you do have really nice materials with this silver trim. And down below that, you will find a really good sized glove box. Uh, it opens quite wide. It's also felt lined, illuminated, and you do even have a CD and DVD player in here. Up top, we do have a sun visor with an LED mirror and light. And it does also detach and extend. But anyway, guys, that sums up all the practical stuff about this all new Q3. So now let's go ahead and get on the road and see how fun it is to drive out there. All right, so let's go ahead and dig into the powertrain information. Now there's a lot of different options of this model in Europe, um, but here in the US we've got only one. And that's gonna be a two liter turbocharged four cylinder um, across all the models, 228 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Uh, and that's 28 horsepower and a 51 pound-feet of torque improvement over the outgoing model. In case you're wondering, that amount of standard power is actually very good for the class. Um, it puts it right in between the base engine and the upgraded engine for the XC40 we were in just like about a couple weeks ago um, and definitely more powerful than a lot of competition. As far as your transmission you always have an 8-speed automatic um, and it's actually come standard with Quattro all-wheel drive whereas the vast majority yeah. of the rivals start with front-wheel drive um, this comes standard with all-wheel drive. 
and 0 to 60 is going to come in at 7 seconds as well. Now as far as the fuel economy, this is a little bit strange, but it actually doesn't improve all that much from the outgoing model, um, and it still is definitely on the low end. So our rating here is 19 city, 27 highway, 22 combined. And it's noteworthy that's actually 2 MPG worse than the Audi Q5, and that's 3 to 5 MPG behind the vast majority of rivals. Actually, every rival that I could think of I checked, and it is behind all of those models. Now there is one um, saving grace here, and that's that this runs on regular unleaded fuel, whereas all those rivals use premium gas. Yes. But anyways, with all that covered, uh, let's go ahead and take it on the road and see how it drives. Alright, so first taking off in the 2019 Audi Q3. Um, power definitely feels really good to start with. You know, like I, we mentioned in the powertrain, or talking about this prior, um, competition kind of comes in a range of different forms, but most of them are less powerful, definitely as standard equipment. A few of them, like the XC40, give you a optional engine, but uh, most of them come with 200-ish horsepower. This one is definitely up on that. And I did just feel definitely yeah. very peppy. Yeah, power is definitely, feels really good for this class of vehicle. And of course you have the confidence of having the standard quattro all-wheel drive across the range. So you can put the power down in a variety of different weather circumstances. Now this vehicle does come with an auto start stop system. As I mentioned before, you have a defeat button right here on the dashboard. Um, but I'll let off the brake here and see how it restarts. Very smoothly. Yeah. Um, that's that's uh, a system that I highly doubt that you'll find intrusive or uh, you know really want to turn off. But of course, if it is something that bothers you, it is nice you still have the option to do that. Right now we're just kind of cruising down the road uh, at a normal 50 miles an hour, just highway speed. And it's certainly very quiet in here. Yes. It does have a very refined um, ride. And they've definitely still used a good amount of sound deadening and all of those nice things. Well, it does. It, it rides like a luxury vehicle. You know, they really haven't cheaped out on anything with this Q3 over like a lot of the other Audi models, like the Q5 especially. You know, I'm really not noticing much of a downgrade. So I just click things into the dynamic mode. So we'll see uh, what types of differences that makes. noticeable difference so that's that's good a lot of brands they put you all these modes you just click around and nothing changes at all um, that's noticeable right from the start I'm sure you guys can tell that um, but throttle response much better um, I like that better it makes it feel more powerful um, the shifting more aggressive kind of a harder type of shift obviously revved it out a lot more really helps uh, make things feel like faster almost like a little, uh, it's not a burble, but kind of a little fart when it shifts uh, in the dynamic mode. You kind of, I don't know if you'll be able to pick up something so subtle from uh, the microphone in here, but 
it is pretty cool. I think you could might have a little bit of fun with this car, you know, and that's something that's really not said about cars in this class. Now you do, of course, have the manual shifting, and Audi gives you full control. Definitely appreciate it. You know, this is not a car that's really just designed to be super sporty or anything, and it's not really. It's definitely has an emphasis on comfort and utility and the things that it needs to be focused on. That being said, like Mason was saying, this is pretty fun. Um, definitely on the sportier side of things, many of the competitors are just like, I'm thinking about, let's see, maybe like the Lexus UX would be a good example. Yeah. That is not a type of vehicle that you're going to want to drive no. fast. <laughs> like it's not rewarding. It is definitely just designed to keep things, you know, luxurious and fuel efficient. Um, but this definitely adds in a, a dosage of sport, which is good to see. Now there are a couple more things to talk about. Um, for one, we have the transmission. This is an 8-speed automatic. It's not a dual clutch like you find in the Q5. Um, and it is pretty smooth. There's not really a ton of difference from between the two, really. They're both, that's both a, a really smooth dual clutch. Um, but it does shift smoothly and seamlessly. It is a little bit harsher intentionally when you put it in dynamic mode, like I already mentioned. Now the other thing to talk about is gonna be the steering. Now we have it in dynamic, so the steering is a little bit heavier, but even here at its heaviest setting, it is still quite light. Um, it doesn't have a great deal of feel or anything like that. Um, but that's to be expected really in this class. I haven't driven anything any of the rivals that this competes with that have more feel. Since the since we drove the XC40 very recently, that's kind of what's on my mind to compare it to. Even with the pull star tuning and uh, all the stuff that it had, its steering feels pretty similar to this, if not even a little lighter. But overall, there is definitely a lot to like about the way that the Q3 drives. Like I already said, um, this type of class, it really varies a great deal. You have some things that are really certainly not pleasant to drive. <laughs> you know, they can be kind of cheap and down because it's the cheapest thing in the each brand's lineup. So sometimes they kind of treat it as a black sheep, so to speak. Um, but this doesn't feel like you're really sacrificing much. The driving experience is very similar to the Q5, which of course is more expensive. And, uh, you know, it's definitely a compliment. When you're driving this vehicle, it feels like you're driving something that is not the cheapest crossover in the lineup because everything in here feels, you know, really up to date with the latest Audi stuff. Um, and like I was saying, it just drives and feels a lot larger than it is. So overall, really, really impressed. Alrighty, and now let's go ahead and discuss the pricing for this 2019 Audi Q3. Uh, so you are going to find a little bit more expensive of a price tag than you would in most of the rivals starting out, uh, but it is important to remember that you do have standard all-wheel drive in this Q3. So for the very base premium model, that's going to start at $34,700. If you want the premium plus, like what we have here, that's going to start at $37,800. And if you want the fully loaded prestige model, that's going to start at $42,900. Now, if you want to add the S-Line appearance group, like what we have checked off on the premium or premium plus, that's going to be an additional $1,300, uh, or it is standard on the prestige model. Now, like I said, this is the premium plus, and we do also have quite a few options checked off on this model. So we have the optional gray paint for $595, the navigation package for $2,000, the Bang & Olufsen audio system for $850, 20-inch wheels for $800, the Sport interior package for $500, as well as the Alcantara, the orange Alcantara trim for $150. And finally, when you add in the destination charge of $995,
this particular model as equipped comes in at forty four thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars uh, which like i said is it can be a little bit more expensive than some of its rivals but this is right in line with stuff like the volvo xc40 we were just in that and that was around forty six thousand uh, so you're really going to be around the same price point especially if you go fully loaded to fully loaded right and uh it the starting prices can be a look they look a little higher on paper but be aware like i said you're getting a standard front wheel drive on pretty much the entire range of competition whereas this is going to include it well guys hope you enjoyed watching one of the first in-depth looks at the 2019 audi q3 premium plus please hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies